Hello class, this is Mr. Lehman. I want to talk to you today about Unit 5. We're getting to the periodic table and getting into the periodic trends. Uh, and one big concept you need to understand before we get into the trends is this concept of effective nuclear charge. So we have protons in the nucleus and we've got electrons in the outside and we're drawing Bohr models so we can see which energy level the electrons are found in. Uh, so we talked about this concept of shielding and so the inner electrons effectively block some of the charge from the positive protons from reaching the outer valence electrons. And so effective nuclear charge then we can define as the charge from the protons in the nucleus that are able to pull in the valence electrons. So which part, how many positive charges uh, did not get shielded from the inner electrons or by the inner electrons. And uh, we'll take a look at a diagram, a couple Bohr models here to explain that concept. Another key vocab word is this. Uh, trend that we're going to look at, atomic radius or atomic size. How we measure the atomic size is by the distance from the midpoint of the atom uh, and the nucleus is the part that's in the center of the atom. So the distance between the center of the nucleus to the outside of the atom, well what marks the outer boundary? It is the outermost valence electron. All right, so let's look at this trend. So let's look at some Bohr models. If we look at uh, sodium, sodium has 11 protons and sodium has 11 electrons. So we're looking at a neutral atom of sodium. Now, sodium doesn't like being neutral. It's very, very unstable. And we'll take a look at why that is here shortly. All right, so sodium has two inner electrons or two electrons in the first shell, the 1s2. And then it has eight electrons in the second shell, so you got the 2s2 and the 2p6. And that takes us 2 plus 8 is 10. So we have one more electron. I'll use a different color for this one. Uh, we have a 3s1 electron. So we got one electron on the outside. We have 11 positive protons. We're trying to pull in all these electrons. Uh, so we can think of these electrons as like little negative magnets. And so if this electron's out here, uh, farthest from the nucleus, these inner electrons, these inner uh, negative magnets are going to effectively shield this electron on the outside from some of the positive charge on the inside. So sodium has 11 positive charge. So let me go ahead and write that number in the nucleus. And uh, wrong button. Sorry about that. All right. So each inner electron, each core electron, can shield the outer electron, the valence electron, from one of the positive charge. So if we have two and eight, we have ten electrons in the core in the inner layers. They're going to cancel out or shield ten of the positive charge from reaching this outermost electron. So if we have eleven positive charge, but we have ten electrons, and those ten electrons are shielding this outer electron from ten of the positive charge, what is the net positive charge left over? One. And so this is what we call the effect of nuclear charge, that word I showed you on the first screen. All right, so there's only a one positive charge pulling in this electron, which is the weakest possible charge that can pull an electron. All right, so that is the first element in period three. And so if we look over, let's hop over five blocks, six blocks to the right. Let's go sulfur. Uh, sulfur has 16 protons and 16 electrons. All right, so I'm just going to write 16 protons in the center here. And because it's in period three, things in period three have three shells of electrons. I need to draw three circles. So the first two electrons, 1s2, and then we have 2s2, and then we have 2p6. That takes us up to eight electrons, or 10 electrons, two and eight or 10. And we have six more. So we got 3s2, 3p4, and I like to draw them in pairs, four pairs of two on the outside. Is eight is the maximum number of valence electrons. It helps make counting easier. All right, so 16 protons, 16 electrons, uh, 10 electrons in the inner layers, six on the outside. And so once again, these 10 inside electrons are going to shield the outer electrons from 10 of the positive charge. So if 10 of the 16 positive charge gets shielded, 
what is left over? We have 6 left over, so 16 minus 10 is 6. So the nucleus, the protons in the nucleus, are going to pull in these valence electrons with a force, an effective nuclear charge of 6 positive. So they each have three shells of electrons. Sodium pulls its electron in with a 1 plus effective nuclear charge. Sulfur, 6 plus. So which is greater? Which is a stronger force of attraction? This one is. So 6 plus. This nucleus, these protons are doing a much better job of pulling in the electrons. So even though they both have three shells, you think they'd be the same size. Which one is smaller? This one. Sulfur is going to be smaller. Sodium is going to be larger. And it's because six positive charges is going to be able to pull in these electrons with a much greater force. And so they'll be able to pull them in closer. Uh, this electron is better able to resist the one plus force that's pulling it in. So it's going to be able to stay farther from the nucleus. Uh, so that is the trend in the same period, the same horizontal row on the table. When we look at family members, when we look at the same group, so if we're in the same group, the same vertical column, uh, let's take a look at sodium. Once again, sodium, 11 electrons, so 2, 8, 1. Compare that to his family member, potassium. Potassium is the one below it on the periodic table. They're both going to have one valence electron, right? We talked about things in group one have one valence electron. And so potassium has one S2, two S2, two P6, three S2, three P6. 4s1. Uh, so notice one electron, they both are pulling in their outermost electron with a 1 plus force. Because sodium has 11 protons, the 10 inner electrons block out 10 of that positive charge. Potassium has 19 electrons, 18 are on the inside. Uh, so 18 cancels out to 18 of that 19 positive charge, leaving a 1 positive charge to pull it in. So which atom is bigger? Potassium is bigger. Why is it bigger? Is because it has four shells of electrons, whereas sodium is smaller. It only has three shells of electrons. Uh, so if we look at our pattern for atomic size, atomic radius, what we see is that as we go down a family, as we go down a group, atoms will get larger. And as we go across the periodic table, across the period, left to right, the atoms will get smaller because the effect of nuclear charge increases and pulls in those outer electrons with better success. All right, so I hope you learned something. Have a great day, everybody.